So a lot of people when they go off-roading, they use high lift jacks, which are great jacks. And some people just bring off-road floor jacks and some people just bring bottle carts and some people just bring floor jacks. Well, I like the scissor lift just because of a compact small, it doesn't take up a big footprint and you can get away with storing it almost anywhere in your vehicle. We actually used this a couple weekends ago when we were off-roading because we got a flat tire on one of our friend's vehicles. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but the plate, because we were doing it in the gravel, this plate actually bowed. It actually started going in the ground sideways. So it actually kind of did that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to fix that by bending this back straight. Then we're going to get a plate and then we're going to actually take that plate. Now I can take these bolts off and use some angle iron that's thicker because this is just folded still right here. It's not actual angle iron, so it's not as structurally sound as angle iron. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to bolt, bend this back. We're going to take a piece of plate and cut a mud plate and just weld it on there. That way it has a bigger footprint. So if you're in soft dirt or soft ground, it won't sink in hopefully as much and do this again. And we'll see how that goes. We'll try to keep the footprint probably about the same size as this right here. So it doesn't take up any more additional room than what that already takes up. So let's Let's see what we can do, because I got some plate right here. Da, 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 look at that. And it's 3 sixteenths. So, we'll just take that. Now I'll bend this back straight, lay it on there. And we'll just mark out what we want to cut, and then cut it, and load it up. That simple. You know, the funny thing is, I bought this welder probably three, four years ago. It was 2019, it's 2023 now, so two, three years, or three, four years. And I bought it with a mindset to doing one job. I had one project I was doing, it was a bumper. I was loading up a bumper and that's all I was gonna do with it. And I thought, if it only lasts for that one bumper, so be it, it's 100 bucks, got my money's worth. And then I did that bumper, and then I did another bumper, and then I did a bed rack, then I did another bed rack, then I did a cage, and I did another bumper, and then I welded on side steps and rock sliders and made all kinds of things with this little welder. And the intention was one job, one time, and I'll hear this four years later, and I'm still using it all the time for projects. There's a lot better welders out there. That the goal is eventually to get a 220 dash shield. And the only thing that sucks about this one is the wire feeder isn't the best. The wire feeder gets stuck sometimes and gets caught up, so it'll cause your wire to to jump and it'll cause your welds to mess up a little bit. But if you're not doing nothing that's crazy important or you care a great deal about what the weld looks like, you can always take a tiger disc to it or a grinder and just smooth it out and be done with it and everything. But as far as it goes for the price, man, like I'm really happy with it because I never would have thought it would have been still working and being able to work this well. I welded up the rock sliders on my Jeep with it and we've jacked my Jeep up with, um, High lift jack. Yeah, high lift jack. We used the high lift jack to lift it up on those from those welds. And I beat the crap out of those hot on those rock sliders off roading and slamming them down and like, hitting stuff with them and never had an issue with the welds breaking. So it's uh 
A lot of people say, oh, 110 can't penetrate deep enough, but it's rated for 316s. And being rated for a 316s, I mean, that's that's typically what this still is right here, that quality is a 316, so I don't see why there'd ever be any issue with it, as long as you're not going over that. And then, anybody who's ever done any welding knows that you can always lay down a root, and then you can fill it in. You just keep welding it and filling it in. So, let me knock the slag off of this. Oh, I also used that welder to do my 8.8. .8. My axle, I loaded up a whole truss and everything on my axle, the shocks, the springs, the mounts, everything. And I've never had an issue. I welded up my, my front track bar bracket. I welded that up instead of drilling and bolting it, I welded that. There's been a couple other things that I've welded on my Jeep with it too, and it's, it's I haven't had a weld break yet. Not bad. It's a seriously ugly weld. Oh. They're all trash, but I promise you it's not going to fail. It, that is some ugly welds. Before anyone gets on there and be like, oh, it's some trash welds, and you didn't lay the bead, blah, 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 blah. It's not no stack of dimes. I know, it's an ugly, angry caterpillar that's been ran over. But the funny thing about it is I also use that little welder to weld up. I fixed... Uh, I had a control arm bracket break on my front axle on the on the original control arm brackets. I welded them up with that. They haven't broke yet. I've had uh, my front bumper, uh, my front winch carrier. I welded everything and did it all with that. I haven't broken anything yet. So say what you will, ugly or not, if it holds, it holds. Oh, you say that to the first time you have a weld break and then it's a different story. No, I'll pull my little $100 welder out and just re-weld it back up and keep on my merry way. That's what I do. All right. Supposed to be two and a half tons. Let's see what she do. plates fully compressed so it works it's all you need to do to be able to fix the tire right there to change it out And this guy told me, he says, uh, my daddy always told me if a welder has to grind his welds down, he's not a welder, he's a grinder. And this other guy told me, his daddy told him that black paint covers up ugly welds. And I replied to them, and I said, well, my daddy told me. Nothing. He left whenever I was two and never came back. Uh, I swear, man, he's just about to come back and leave cigarettes. I think that will do. Let it dry and come back and. Now we have another project coming up too. <clears throat> we required a, a bench grinder and a chop saw. The yard sale from a friend of my wife's who was having a yard sale. I guess they went through a divorce and she's like <laughs> all her and stuff. So got a really good deal on it. So I already pre-cut the material for it. So we're gonna be building a little fab table, a little four foot wide along. 
my 22 inch wide fab table for them. And we're gonna, we have a, I kind of have a couple different ideas how I'm gonna do it, but that'll be for a later time. So, but that's it for the video guys. Thanks for watching.